Hey, welcome to the Shark Husbandry Network. I've gotten a lot of requests to do some information, some helpful data on a real popular shark. Uh, it's a gray smoothhound shark. Uh, obviously, all you guys are aware that I'm a, I'm a big fan of, the, of that shark family, the gray smoothhound, the brown smoothhound, the California leopard shark, the Japanese leopard shark, you know, and so on and so forth. I currently house a banded hound shark, Japanese leopard shark. Um, it's a, a very, very, very similar species to the gray smoothhound shark. <clears throat> Biggest differences that I can see is uh, the gray smoothhound, I would believe, tends to get uh, a tad bit larger um, than, the, uh, than the banded hound shark will, and the water temperatures. They're very, very hardy sharks, uh, extremely hardy. Uh, they'll give you a lot of the activity that you look for in a tank. They're less expensive than the California leopard. They're less expensive than the Japanese leopard shark. Uh, you can very rarely ever find a brown smoothhound shark. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it's probably the most readily available in the pet trade. As far as the, hus the, the husbandry and the, the, the care and the maintenance and all that, it's going to be the exact same as it's going to be for the banded hound shark. Very clean water, uh, a lot of filtration, skimming power. I, uh, I do think that you're probably going to need a tank that's going to be somewhere in the net, a realistic, you know, size of somewhere, uh, a tank that's going to be, I would say, at least 10 to 12 feet long and something that's going to be probably at least six feet wide uh, and that would probably be just about a minimum for one of those. Uh, you may get away with a tad bit smaller. Uh, I've seen people do it and I've seen the sharks live just fine. It's just uh, once they start getting large, especially a female because the females can get very, very, very large in size, I think you'll start to notice that, you know, that the shark is just too small of an environment for the animal to be in. Uh, the biggest difference that you'll see is gray smoothhound sharks are very sensitive to water temperature. So you'll see them uh, swimming erratically or starting to panic like they're freaking out all the time and, uh, or you know, nosing the top of the water more so than normal. It's kind of a common activity between those sharks in captivity anyway, uh, especially in a, inside of aquariums. But they'll do it a lot more and they'll consistently do it nonstop if the water temperatures are in the, high, in the uh, you know, mid to high 70s. This shark typically is a, it's a very, it's a cold water shark, just like a banded hound shark, but banded hound sharks can handle, you know, somewhere around 77, 78 degrees max, whereas the gray smooth hound shark really needs to be in an environment that's really no hotter than 70, 69 degrees. Uh, what that entails a lot of times is, you, is, is buying a chiller, uh, a chiller that's going to be able to maintain that colder water temperature that you're going to need in order for that species to be happy. One of the reasons why they like the colder water is because colder water has more oxygen in it than the warmer water does. So like when you see water temps get up to the 80, 81 degrees, uh, the oxygen level tends, tends to drop in, in, the, in the water somewhat. And that's why you see the shark acting erratically is because the oxygen levels in the cooler water are a little bit better than they are in the warmer water. So if you do get a, a, um, a gray smoothhound shark, you remember that you are buying a couple things. You're buying a shark that's gonna give you a lot of activity, a lot of enjoyment. It's a very hardy shark. They're gonna eat shrimp, squid, whiting, all your basic things that most of your sharks eat. Uh, very good to give them uh, Missouri vitamins. Uh, Missouri shark vitamins are a great product, probably the best product that you can get on the market for sharks. Um, and um, also need to remember that these sharks can tend to carry parasites when brought into the, out, of, from, out of the wild into captivity, which is how most of the sharks are getting into your tank. So just make sure you pick out a very good a specimen that's not anemic, doesn't have any, looks like he has any spinal problems, uh, not swimming erratically, uh, breathing normally, uh, you know, not panning very hard. Uh, I would also recommend definitely getting a chiller, uh, keeping the water temperature down where you want it to be at. Tank mate wise, you can put these guys with just about anything. They're really not going to eat anything else in the tank. I mean, some snails and some crabs and stuff they might try to get a hold of, but mine never messes with anything. I, you're probably not going to have too much headache out of them to begin with. But uh, uh, gray smoothhound sharks can run you somewhere anywhere between four, five, six hundred bucks. You can pick those up for, and I've seen them even cheaper than that. Uh, and they're readily available all over the place. And you should be able to have one and have it for a very long time or, as, you know, you know, till, till it passes away. You're talking about a shark that lives 12 years, so uh, 12, 15 years. Uh, they, can, they can definitely get up there in age. So uh, just remember when you do purchase one of these, make sure your tank's big enough. Uh, make sure that you don't use a lot of rock work. Uh, they just like to swim. They're not, you know, they're not going to go hiding underneath rocks and digging in behind rocks and stuff and they can hurt themselves. So make sure you have a lot of open space, a lot of open area for the shark to swim, not a lot of rock work. Uh, your filtration, your skimming power, everything's up to date. You have a chiller on the aquarium and make sure you have a large enough size environment for the shark to be able to live in at least most of its life. You know, your standard, you know, 300 gallon aquarium is only going to hold that shark for 
probably somewhere for about maybe maybe six to eight months, and it's going to outgrow that aquarium because um, they're going to grow about a foot a year, for at least for the first two or three years. So uh, you're talking about an animal that you can get that's 10, 12, 14 inches long, and then all of a sudden you look around, it's you got a three-foot shark in your house in, a, in an aquarium that's only six feet long and you know probably three feet wide. So uh, just to save yourself a lot of headache and trying to find a home for an animal, that, that's very difficult to find a home for an animal like that. Um, and saving yourself a lot of headache, make sure the animal's a lot happier. I would definitely make sure that you've got the space uh, and make sure that you kind of keep those water temperatures down as much as possible. If you do that, you'll have no problems out of that shark. Very easy shark to take care of. Uh, well, it should eat readily within a couple days of putting it in its environment and, uh, and fairly inexpensive for the enjoyment that you can get out of the animal and the look that you're looking for. This is the Shark Husbandry Network. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below and I'll get back to you in 24 hours. Thanks.